would love it. I love Arkansas. My grandma Fairchild used to live in Arkansas. What do you do in Arkansas? Do you, do you raise animals or you live in the town? Or? Well, we raise good looking women like me. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> you are good looking too, baby. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're cute, in fact. Yeah, what, what do you do? Do you have for... a boyfriend? No, I've been looking for one. With... Been looking? Well, this is the place to come. I'm still looking. I'm looking for one silver in his hair and gold in his pockets. <laughs> how old? You, how old do you want a? How old do you want a husband? Well, he's got to be at least twenty years younger than me. <laughs> To keep up with you. To keep up with me, yes. I, I, I has to sleep by himself and like to do he eat his own cooking and like to get up and go and go and go. That's the kind I want. That's the kind you want. Well, that sounds like a good kind to me. Yeah. Wow, you're 90? You're going to be 93 at your next birthday? Yes, sir. <gasps> what sparkle you have in your eyes. You're alive. Yes, you have sir. life. Yes, sir. I, I'm, I belong to the NDY club. What does that you mean? you don't know what that is, not dead yet. See? <laughs> You like that, Father? Yes, sir. NDY Club. Hey, I like that. My mother and dad are 78, and they're sure not dead yet, I'll tell you that. I believe all the people, all the senior citizens, I hate that senior citizen term anyway, they ought to unite and, and join uh, your club. What's your name? William, ask your name. My name's Lillian Williams. Lillian Williams Club. Yeah. NYD. Is that what it is? Yes. N-D-Y. Oh, N-D-Y. Not dead yet. Oh, not dead yet. Yeah, yeah. N-D-Y. Oh, not yet dead. That'd be all not right, too. Not <laughs> dead yet. Not dead yet. And we're going to live, live until we die, right? We're going to live forever. If I live like, feel like I could do it, I'll live to be 100 and, and uh, maybe 110. I don't know. Sure. You may just have to shoot me. I believe I'm going to live what, what, do you do for, what do you do for fun in, in uh, Arkansas? <laughs> Well, uh, I just uh, do nothing but fun most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you, just oh. laugh, I just laugh a lot and tell a lot of jokes and all of that, you know. And it's Laughter like, must be good for you. Well, that's why I've lived to be 93, you see. If you have a good belly laugh, you know, you you, you get, you you have, uh, uh, some people have some uh, trouble, and I do too, but my have the trouble of getting something in mine, you see. <laughs> and that... <laughs> And the doctor says that one life is worth a barrel of pills or a bushel of black drop, so I'll bring laughs to everybody. Oh, that's like terrific, Lily. Lily Williams. She's my kind of lady here. Well, what do you do for a living, Lillian? How do you make your, your, well, your I, do you make money? I'm, or? I'm living on my social security, and I'm going east to the west and <laughs> to north to the south and over the cuckoo's nest. But I do some shows for a living, and they give me a free will offering, and then I go to You're the next show place. show business? Yes, sir. I've been in show business since I was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And, the, and uh, then I, 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 they give me a free will offering, and then I go to the next place. Johnny with Carson that. gave you a free will offering? No, he paid me $190, <laughs> but that wasn't enough. $190! Man, I paid more than that. No, I like him. He's well, the he world. He's the, the beautiful and lovely, just like he is on the tape, you know. I, I think they pay 420 now if I get to go oh, back. I'll have, have we need to get you back there. Yeah, yeah. Back. I might That's get a, a little more money. See, well, I, what do, you, do you sing or dance or well, tell jokes? Well, I don't sing very much. I sing bathroom singing, but I'm a piano player, primarily a piano player. Oh. And then second, I'm a whistler. Whistler? And, yeah, whistle. You're a whistler? Yes, sir. I learned to whistle. Like, fun. Yes, sir. Like that kind oh, of no, mine is with my finger. That pucker whistle is pretty good. You join our pucker whistlers. You know. but, <laughs> I'm a favorite whistler. So you'll hear me. A finger me whistler. You hear me after a while, maybe. Could on you do program. one? Would you yes, whistle sir. for him? I will. Uh -huh. Get, you need a microphone? Uh, well, well, of course I you need a microphone. Think, what am I talking about? I think that, Get her a I microphone. Bring me, one, bring me a stand microphone oh, here. Okay. There you are. I'll figure this. Right. Is this right here? or Let's get it adjusted. Is that too high? I won't, don't want to hide your face. Oh, it popped right off, Aaron. Here, you put it there. There's. <laughs> okay, just there. How do you do this? Oh, there it is. Let's see why they have engineers. No, no, put it down. I'd have to stoop to get it. Oh, well, we want, we want to see you, though. Isn't this a fascinating program? <laughs> Jim and Lillian, face a microphone.
Yeah. Oh, we want to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we yeah, ready? Maybe, maybe. All right. Or not, I didn't know if you know I could tune up or anything, and we just threw you right into that. Oh, we can do that. Do, do, yeah, you, you, you threw have me to, right into that. Yeah, do you ever have to wet your whistle? I and mean, uh, yeah, I heard to wet your whistle. You, you know, just put your fingers in your mouth and make a little well there and then blow, but be sure you keep your teeth in your mouth. <laughs> I cannot do it. I've always tried to do that all my life. I can't do it. No, I can't do it. That's that's an art that I haven't learned. I always wanted to do that too, but I, don't, I just like this. I can get a little bit out like that, but I, I can whistle like that. I can whistle that way. That's the only way I can whistle. Yeah, My grand grandma always told me, though, that whistling women and cackling hens always come to no good ends. Did your grandma ever tell you that? <laughs> and I quit that for 60 years because, because I was afraid of it. Because of that. Yes. But now you, 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 you can tell you've come to a good end here, so that must not... You've heard a new slogan. Oh, the hen that crows gets the most goes. That's the reason why... I Well, Tammy Faye's grandma was the greatest saint I've ever lived, and she whistled in the kitchen yeah, she while she baked. My mother used to get so mad at me, and my, my, she knows she did, because every time she'd go to ball me out, I'd whistle. And she'd say, Tamara Faye, would you stop that whistling? She'd say to me. So whistling was sort of, you know, I whistle when I got nervous. I whistle when I was happy. I, yeah, it was unladylike, they said. But I still whistle all the time. It didn't, it didn't give you any puckers practice, around your mouth. You just practice a little bit more. You join the big national, international whistle off in Carson City, Nevada next September. I go to that all the what time. What if somebody makes you laugh? Though? A whistle you can't off. Whistle a whistle smile. off? Is that like a bake off? Can't laugh and whistle no, you at the can't. Same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's my problem. See, I go to whistle and I get Could, tickled and want to laugh. Then you, you, then you can't whistle. Can you whistle the way you whistle when you, you know? No. 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 Got to just whistle. Just whistle. whistle. Well, could you whistle one more for us? Do you have a one more? Listen. How about side by side? Side. Do you, band? Do you know side by side? Yeah, you know that. <laughs> that's that's in the primer lesson, right? So primary lesson, they did learn that one. We're all as Christians working side by side all over the world, and we're going Wait, to just before you do that, down the big I hear you're a Methodist. Yes, I am. What are you? <laughs> I don't know. The Ed brothers told us that they got together at a Methodist camp. Methodists must have good sense of humor. Yes, I think they have. My preacher, when he gets ready to throw me out the window, I just tell a good joke on him, and then he goes back and takes me back. Put you back in again. Yes. All right, here's Lillian Williams one more time, side by side, which all of us Christians are supposed to be.
she's given us today to live a long life is keep on laughing. Yes, sir. Yes. Can you say amen? Amen. Yes. Would you come back again? Yes. Sir. You're a delight. Many times. And you can sit in my studio audience anytime you want. Thank you. So sit down and watch the rest of the show because right now, Jay Hoyle has just arrived on the scene and this is his first visit to PTL. So I want you to really laugh. If he's funny, I don't know. I've never heard Jay myself. So I'm meeting for the first And give him a great big welcome. Would you please, Jay Hoyle of PTL. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me first say how happy I am to be here. I'm happy to be any place. We flew through that storm yesterday from California, and the plane was really bouncing up and down like a yo-yo. Guy sitting in front of me was moaning and praying, Lord, if you'll get this plane safely on the ground again, I'll give half of everything I own to PTL. <laughs> well, we finally landed. I tapped the guy on the shoulder. I says, I heard you promise the Lord that if he put this plane on the ground, you'd give half of everything you own to PTL. I says, I'm on my way there now. Why don't you come with me and make your contribution today? He says, I just renegotiated with the Lord. I told him that I would, if I ever got on another airplane, I would give everything I own to PTL. <laughs> but this is a lovely place. I was so impressed with everything here. Uh, of course, the Grand Hotel, everyone comments on how wonderful it is. And it is grand. It's uh, one floor. They, it's inspirational. Uh, on one floor, they have the uh, Matthew Suite. On another floor, they have the Mark Suite. On another floor, they have the Luke Suite, and there's a John in every room. <laughs> Let's talk about certain things. Here's something you could always count on. Let me pick up one item in a supermarket, head for the 10 items or less express line. There will inevitably be somebody in front of you with 12 items. They won't let you go first. I don't understand that. I had a guy in front of me the other day because he only had two items, a note and a gun. <laughs> a robber handed this pretty little bank teller a paper sack and a note says, I got a gun, put all the large bills in the sack and keep your mouth shut. She handed him back a note and says, straighten your tie, stupid, you're on television. <laughs> Guy holds up a Chinese rest and says, give me all your cash. The Chinaman says, to take out? Guy runs into a liquor store with a big tube before. Bam, hits a clerk right across the head. Says, this is a holdup. Give me all the money out of that cash register. Whack, he hits him again. Clerk gives him all the money out of the cash register. Bam, he hits him one more time. Better don't you call the police for at least five minutes. Heads for the door. Clerk says, just a second. Reached in his pocket, pulled out a $100 bill, handed to the guy. He says, what's this for? He says, buy yourself a gun. You're going to kill somebody with that tube before. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you're, uh, you're, you're nice people. I was doing a show uh, a couple of weeks ago. Somebody sent me up a note to recognize a couple in the audience that were celebrating an anniversary. I enjoy doing that, especially this couple celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. I spotted them over on my right. Guy was crying like a baby. I says, what's your problem? He says, 25 years ago, I wanted to kill her. My lawyer said if I did, I'd get 25 years. If I had tonight, I'd be a free man. <laughs> I, I realize that's not fair to you ladies, so I want to even the score with you. Woman stood up in divorce court. She says, I don't want the house. I don't want the car. I don't want any alimony. All I want is for my husband to leave you the way he found me. The judge says, how was that? She says, I was a widow. <laughs> is that fair? <laughs> Had to be very careful doing comedy and get in trouble. Learned that from my grandfather, stand-up comedian, until he was 85 years old. Could still tell a joke, just couldn't stand up. <laughs> old guy made it to 107. He didn't die. He overslept one morning, and they buried him. <laughs> we had a new drive-in burial service in California, jump in the box. <laughs> and why do they allow funeral possessions to go through red lights? What's the hurry? <laughs> There's most people in my family have lived to a ripe old age, except for a great-great-uncle who died at Little Bighorn. And he didn't ride with Custer. He was 
camping nearby and went over to complain about the noise. You don't believe that, do you? Well, here's something you can believe, and it's the absolute truth. And every day you look around you, you see what a fact it is that we have more and more people of the senior citizen age group, and I think that's a good idea. That's where the brains are. You know, for one time in our society, we've got the brains in the majority. Even our president's a senior citizen. The other day, he was addressing a group of senior citizens when he told them about the Social Security cuts. They polygripped and feathered him. It's almost permanent, you know. And the man did not need that hearing aid. Somebody just said, stick it in your ear. <laughs> hey, those are great. The little hearing aids the size of your thumbnail. I bought my mother one of them. She won't use it. I swear she hears voices. <laughs> said she did not need a new hearing aid. The old one works just fine. I said, yeah, what kind is it? Oh, it's about 715. A couple in their mid-80s having the time of their lives. I mean, the kids are grown and gone, got their own business. The family money belongs to this couple, and they're enjoying themselves. They're traveling around the country, taking cruises, long vacations, having a great time. But neither one of them been to a doctor for 10 or 12 years, and their friends and family say, you silly, you shouldn't do that. I mean, you look good, you feel good, but you should go to the doctor from time to time and get a checkup. So they go, no problems. Doctor examines the husband, says, my, you've got the vital signs of a man in his 20s. Look like you're going to live forever. Examines the wife, same thing. You're such a healthy couple in your mid-80s. I'm curious, is there still romance in your life? The old guy says almost every night. Doctor looks at the wife, says, is that right? She says, yeah, almost on Monday, almost on Tuesday, almost on Wednesday. <laughs> Let's face it, age does things to you. Since I've passed 40, my life's upside down. Sit down at the dinner table, feel romantic. Go to bed at night, feel hungry. Anybody relate to that? And I cannot stay up late like I used to anymore either. We were working a series of conventions in Phoenix not too long ago, and there was, we had Saturday night off, which is very unusual, but there was a movie on it, the drive-in I wanted to see. So I jumped in the car, drove out to the movie, pulled in, parked the car, movie started, I fell asleep. Woke up the next morning in the middle of a flea market. <laughs> Bought this jacket. <laughs> Had to, gave another jacket to my wife, says, give this to the cleaner. Next day she said it wouldn't fit the cleaner, so she gave it to the mailman. Because <laughs> I found a great cologne that makes me completely irresistible to my wife. Makes me smell like Kmart. <laughs> What a great facility this is. Bright, I can see everybody's face, I enjoy that. Church I grew up in was so dark. One evening at a service, one of the members stood up and he says, I make a motion that we buy a new chandelier for this church. One of the other guys jumped up and says, I'm again it. He says, nobody knows how to spell it. Nobody knows how to order it. Nobody in the church knows how to play it. <laughs> and besides that, we need more light in here. We, we only had one church in our town. It's a very small town, both city limit signs on the same post. We're still a little bit back with the women watch hee haw for fashion tips. But we did. We did have only one church in our town, and uh, uh, we didn't even have a minister. We were just too small a town to support one, but we'd have circuit preachers come through every Sunday. You probably heard of this sort of thing. Now, most of the guys we got for young fellows from a college not too far away, they were studying to be ministers. They'd come through, hold services, whatever was in the collection plate was theirs, which usually wasn't too much. They'd eat at one of the members' homes and go on. But during the summer, it was terrific because we had evangelists coming through, and we got some great ones. One guy, unbelievable, kept that church packed every night of the week, but he wasn't satisfied with that. During the days out preaching on the street, going into the bar, bothering our drunks, we didn't have very many. One get sick, would have to borrow one from another town. 
preacher walked into the bar, announced who he was, walked up to the first guy at the bar. He says, do you want to go to heaven? He says, I sure do. He says, well, stand by the door. Walks up to the next guy. He says, do you want to go to heaven? He says, yes. He will stand by the door. All the way down the bar he does this till he comes to the last guy at the bar who's really smashed. He says, do you want to go to heaven? He says, not me. He says, you mean to tell me you don't want to go to heaven when you die? So yeah, when I die, I thought you was getting up a load to go right now. 